No understanding of IT would be complete without a focus on computation itself. The logic, the decision making, the processing that turns inputs to outputs and makes everything go. The lion's share of the history of computation was a story of miniaturization, Moore's law, better, faster, cheaper, stronger. And then about 10 years ago, there was a recognition that maybe we don't need the computers here with us at all. The cloud, the movement of computation from our physical space to a virtualized utility has opened up elasticity, flexibility, possibility for all who've embraced it. But that's still not the end game. After cloud, after the lift and shift, decentralized ledger technology. Some call it blockchain, but blockchains had a bit of an image problem. Dark actors doing dark actions on the dark web. DLT, distributed ledger tech, promises a future that recognizes that no one of us might be as trustworthy as all of us. It's the idea of, in math we trust, in cryptographically secure processing we trust. And so, rather than putting all of our eggs in one virtual basket, we can spread them across many. And this applies to more than just currencies. This could apply to storage, to bandwidth, to processing. The limits are only bounded by our imagination. But even that is not the end. After blockchain, after DLT, the spatial web, the recognition that a generation of us have worked in ever more virtual environments, and we're beginning to recognize that the physical environment could use some IT love as well. So Web 3.0, the spatial web, appending bits, digits, and information to atoms and places and spaces so that our AR, VR dreams go from solo games to shared professional and personal experiences. Seeing information floating over a park bench. Last time it was clean. Next time it'll be clean. Seeing the name of that person at a cocktail party floating over his head. Thank goodness. The point being that we can begin to decorate reality itself with bits and take reality itself online. The furthest stop we can see on this train, quantum computing. Harnessing the laws of quantum mechanics to turn previously impossible problems into solvable problems and previously intractable, hairy problems into child's play. To what end? Drug discovery, sales optimization, space travel, chemical work. We will look back at quantum to today's digital reality as we do today at digital to our ancestors' analog reality. Taken together, this move from computers the size of your house to computers under your desk to computers under somebody else's desk to many computers to physical computers is the recognition that it's a move towards abundance. The problems we've faced as a species have gotten trickier and stickier with every passing year. But there's good news. Our capacity to solve those problems has grown faster than the problems themselves. Today's leaders should recognize that to keep that winning streak alive, we need to invest in the two Ms, margins and moonshots. Margins, the free space in our professional day to dream, to be curious, to experiment and follow our passions. Why? Well, it's been said that mighty oak trees from little acorns grow. We need to make sure that there's a place for those acorns in a world too often ruled by quarterly numbers and quarreling constituents. 
Two, moonshots. Dreaming big, aligning and inspiring around big generational goals. What's our Apollo mission? What's our Hoover Dam? Chicago architect Daniel Burnham famously said, make no small plans, for they have not the power to stir our hearts, and they themselves won't even be realized. Let's aim high, big brassy bets, backed up with high performance execution. That's the ticket towards building a future we're all excited to be a part of.